will stand and welcome him as he come to bring the word of God to us this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Round of applause. A greater welcome this morning. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? It is so good to see my good friend, Sister Cindy Mansing, the daughter of our good friend, Sister Debbie Mansing, who went to be with the Lord. And they were here, Sister Debbie and Brother Harry were here about three months or so ago. So it is so good to see Sister Cindy in the house and also Sister Anita. Amen. Amen. And I just want to say that, you know, we, we really love your mom and the legacy that she has left, a legacy of faith. You know, she was a fighter down to the end. I spent some of the last moments with her. And, you know, while we were praying, she was saying, Amen, Amen. You know, she, in other words, she never gave up the fight. She was a tremendous woman of God, a woman of faith, a woman of character, a woman of substance, a woman of virtue. So, Sister Cindy, we continue to pray and support you. We know that to lose a mother is never an easy thing. I went through that experience a few months ago as well. So, we are standing in solidarity with you. Amen. Brother Paul, let's sing that song again. Draw me close. The Lord is here. He is here with us. He is here with us this morning. Hallelujah. With uplifted hands. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. Come on, lay it down. Lay it down. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. Hallelujah. With uplifted hands. No, no one else will do. Come on. Sing it like you mean it. For nothing else can take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. Find the way Bring me back to you Yeah. 
glorify your name. Let there be a shout of praise. Let there be a shout of praise. We magnify. We glorify. We exalt his name. We magnify. We lift up your name. We are to be praised. We are worthy of honor. We are worthy of honor. We are worthy of honor. We magnify, we magnify we glorify. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy of honor. Oh, you are worthy of honor. We magnify. We magnify. We reverence your holy name. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, worthy, worthy of your praise. Worthy of your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. We exalt. Hallelujah, we exalt. Hallelujah. We glorify your we name. We glorify Lord. your name. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We magnify. We magnify your we name. We glorify. We magnify you. You are worthy holy of praise. One, holy one. You are worthy of honor. Hallelujah. And Lord, once again, we thank you. For this opportunity to stand before your people, to share your word. And mighty God, I pray that the entrance of your word will bring light and life. I pray that you will amplify your word through my voice. Mighty God, I pray that as this word goes forth today, it will pierce the hearts of the hearers. Mighty God, I pray that you will confirm your word with signs and wonders that sick bodies would be healed demons will be driven out doors will be open in the mighty name of jesus and lord we are careful always to give you the praise the honor and the glory and the church of jesus christ say amen, amen and amen Yes, let's put our hands together for the Lord. He's worthy of our praise. And before you take your seats, if you have your Bibles this morning, we are in the Gospel according to Mark. Mark chapter 13. We are reading two verses. Mark 13, verse 7 and 8. When you're found it, give me a big amen. 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 Mark 13, 7 and 8. I read, you can follow in your Bibles. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled. Someone needs to hear that. Yeah. Jesus is saying, do not press the panic button. Yes. Do not be troubled yes. by what is happening in the world around you. He says, for such things must happen. They must happen. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. And there will be earthquakes in various places. And there will be famines and troubles. He says, these are the beginnings of sorrows the beginnings of sorrows may the lord bless the reading of his word to our hearing you may have your seats and for all of us gathered we welcome those who are joining us on the world wide web and this morning we are speaking on the subject the war that tips the prophetic scales the war that tips the prophetic scales. And the further we progress in the chronos, sequential time, it is the closer we get to the kairos, Amen. significant time. The next major kairos event on God's end time prophetic calendar is the rapture. You notice that from this pulpit, we regularly talk about these things. 
You know why we do that? We want you, the church, to be equipped. We want you to be aware as to what is happening. We want you to be able to interpret what is happening in the world, the current events, through the word of Almighty God. And that is why from time to time we are going to come to you with these things. So that you will be informed. You will not be ignorant. Because the Bible says the sons of Issachar, they had understanding of the times. And because they understood the times, they knew what to do. We want you to know what to do in these times. But we are not at the point of the rapture yet. The rapture could happen at any time. But I believe before the rapture takes place, we're going to see more global instability. You just saw it in the text. Jesus says there will be wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, many troubles. He says these are just the beginning. It's just the tip of the iceberg. There's more to come. And so I believe that there's more hardships, there's more woes, there's more troubles that will convulse the earth. And it is this global instability, this volatility that will give rise to what the Bible refers to as the bird pangs. These bird pangs is what will pull Christ out of the womb of heaven back to the earth. And we thank God for Sister Oma. Amen. Amen. We are expecting to hear good news. Amen. Soon. Amen. Ah, she's listening. And Sister Oma, you say, why are you talking about Sister Oma? Because Sister Oma right now is experiencing birth pains. Amen. She's about to bring forth that child Amen. that was ordained by Almighty God. Amen. And so these things that we are seeing in the earth today, this pressure, this trouble, these wars, earthquake, all these things, they are bird pounds. They are necessary. Jesus says they must happen. You know why they are happening? These are the things that will pull Christ out of the womb of heaven into the earth. He was the one that used that analogy. And we know that the Bible says, according to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, that there is going to be a shout of the archangel. And the Lord is going to descend from the womb of heaven into the earth. He's going to hover over the clouds. And then the Bible says, those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up. The dead in Christ, they shall rise first. And then we will be forcibly snatched up. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. What an amazing thing. I am looking forward to that day. The dead in Christ, all the graves will be open. The sea is going to give up the dead. The ashes that were sprinkled all over the place, all of a sudden will come back together. And those bodies are going to rise up into the air. And those of us who are alive and remain, we will join them. And the Bible says, so shall we be with the Lord. But we're not there yet. There's still a few things that has to unfold. And boy, oh boy, are they unfolding. You say, well, what is unfolding? How many of you have been looking at the news? How many of you are aware as to what is going on? We as born again Christians, we cannot afford to be the ostrich that buries our head in the sand. You need to know what is going on in the world. Because these events have implications and so there has been significant escalation in the conflict between israel and the hezbollah how many of you heard about that yes. hezbollah is one of three major terrorist organizations they are a proxy of iran they are being funded and supported by iran and just two days ago on the 20th of September, 2024, there were some Israeli airstrikes in Beirut. 
And I don't know how they knew, but they had some really good intelligence. The Israelis knew that 16, at, at least 16 of the top Hezbollah commanders were having a meeting. And while they were having this meeting, all of a sudden it started to rain bombs from the sky. And in an instant, those 16 commanders were vaporized. They were taken out. They paid a heavy price. And included in that 16 commanders was one of the highest ranking commanders in the Hezbollah. A gentleman by the name of Abraham Akil. He was one of the top commanders. He was taken out two days ago. And so they paid a heavy price because almost their entire leadership was decimated with that one strike. And yet... This wasn't the only devastating attack to hit the Hezbollah in the last few days. Because earlier in the week, there was a series of coordinated explosions in Lebanon, which they suspect to be Israeli sabotage. I don't know how many of you heard about it. But while these fellas were on their pagers <laughs> and their walkie-talkies, <laughs> as soon as they started talking, I think, all of them get blown up. I understand that 70 people were killed. And 3,000 others were injured. Now the unfortunate reality with these wars and conflicts is many times there is the loss of innocent lives. And that is an unfortunate reality of war. But what did Jesus say? What did, he, what did Jesus say in the text we just read? These things what? Must come to pass. Must. Must come to pass. And so the Hezbollah was dealt some heavy blows in the last few days. And in retaliation, they said, we are going to continue to attack until, and hear what they said, we are going to continue to attack Israel until the war in Gaza comes to an end. So we know that this could lead to an even broader war. In response, the Israelis said, hear what is going on. We hear, you know, we are preparing for a ground invasion. So that's what Israel is saying. They have already fortified their troops on the Israeli-Lebanon border. Ready, if and when they decide to, to lead a ground invasion into Lebanon to extinguish the Hezbollah. So, what am I saying? I'm saying that this situation is escalating. It is volatile. And many fear that this war could become even worse than the 2006 war that took place between uh, Israel and Lebanon. You say, well, what are the implications of these rising tensions? And the question we have to ask ourselves is this. Why are these conflicts escalating now? What does the Bible have to say about these things? We have to connect the dots to understand what is happening in now in the Middle East and what is likely to happen next. What we are seeing here is just the tip of the iceberg. And you have to understand that the big issue in the Middle East, you, see, you know what is fueling all of these conflicts? It has been and will continue to be the right to land ownership in Palestine. That is the main issue that is fueling all of the conflicts. Because both Israel and her enemies believe that they have the right to ownership of the land that Israel is occupying. You see, Israel enemies, they want to get Israel out of the region. They want to obliterate Israel from the region. And that is what is fueling all of these conflicts. And that is what caused, that was one of the main factors that caused the now infamous Hamas attack on Israel 
October 7th last year. Almost a year has gone. And it seems like this conflict has no end in sight. It continues. Where lives are being lost every day. And I understand that since the attack on Israel one year ago, remember? 1,200 Israelis were killed. And 251 others were kidnapped. Since that incident on the 7th of October, I understand that more than 41,000 lives have been lost. That's one of the sad realities of war. And the main architect, the main instigator behind these wars in the region is Iran. They are the architect behind this whole thing. They are the ones pulling the strings. And in fact, Iran's leadership have gone on record many times, stating that their supreme ambition is to wipe out Israel from off of the map. That's their number one objective. And so they are prepared to sacrifice thousands of lives because what these terrorists do, they hide themselves in the midst of civilians, whether it's a hospital, a school, that is where they implant themselves. And you know why they do that? Because they know that whenever Israel attacks, there will be a lot of uh, uh, civilians losing their lives. And so they will be able to sling mud on Israel and say, see, look at them. Killing innocent people. But it's really the terrorists who have implanted themselves in the midst of the civilians. To use them as human shields. That is what is happening. So that is Iran's supreme objective. They want to get rid of Israel. And so... All of these attacks that you're seeing, Hamas, Hezbollah, as well as the Houthis. I don't know how many of you have heard about the Houthis. So you have the Hamas in Gaza, you have the Hezbollah in Lebanon, and you have the Houthis in Yemen. You know what the Houthis have been doing? They have been intercepting those, um, those shipping routes. That is that that you know where a lot of you know those routes are, are used to supply the world. You have you know those transshipment points through the Red Sea and so on, where a lot of goods and products are shipped through that that region. And so what the Houthis are doing is you know they are, they are attacking those ships, disrupting the global supply chains, and so that is now impacting the world. They're sending drones and all kind, of, all kind of attacks. Iran is the architect behind all of those terror organizations. Pulling the strings. Creating instability in the region. And what they do is they fund these organizations. And they give them safe havens. So that they can continue their nefarious agenda. And as the stakes increase, as the conflicts escalate, Iran is prepared to even sacrifice those proxies in a heartbeat. Why? Because it, it, it furthers their ambition. Their ambition is to get rid of Israel at all costs. At all costs. And so that's why the Hamas was sacrificed last year. I mean, Hamas have lost, lost many of their soldiers. This is why the Hezbollah is now being sacrificed. This is why the Houthis were being used and sacrificed. Because all of that fits into the overall plan of Iran. To get rid of Israel. And do you know why the war in Gaza started last year? You know what was one of the main reasons for that war? Just before that war took place, that attack took place, Saudi Arabia, which is the largest power broker in the region, right? They have the most oil and gas resources. They are the largest power broker in that Middle East region there. They were going to normalize relations 
with Israel, establish embassies and so on. In other words, they were no longer going to recognize Israel as the enemy. There were some other nations that did that. Remember the Abraham Accords? And remember there were some other countries, Ethiopia and Bahrain and some others, normalized relations with Israel. So the list of countries lining up to normalize relations with Israel was growing. Why? Because Israel, Israel have a lot of technology. They provide a lot of food and fruits and all sorts of different things. Israel is recognized as a powerhouse. So some of these Arab nations recognize, especially coming out of COVID, that for us to thrive and prosper post-COVID, we need to have Israel as an ally. And so that is why they were going to normalize relations. And hence, when Iran heard about that, Iran says, we can't allow that to happen. We can't allow, because that is going to weaken the, the Islamic Brotherhood. That is going to now give Israel the right of legitimacy to exist in the Middle East. And so we can't allow that. And that's why the war in Gaza started. That's why you're having all the instability now. Because Saudi Arabia, they put that plans on hold, but they have said that we still plan to normalize relations with Israel. And so that is why you're having all of this instability. Because what the narrative will be is that they will be able to accuse Israel, which they are doing now. They're saying, you know, war crimes, all they're committing war crimes, all they're killing innocent people and all this kind of thing. Slinging mud on Israel. Trying to prevent those relations from being normalized. And that is why Iran is using these proxies, the Hamas, the Hezbollah, the Houthis, to create instability, to get Israel into war, so that they can now accuse Israel before the world and say, you see, that is the plan. So that war last year is to, you know, is to further Iran's objective. You know, to paint Israel as this heinous war crime criminal country. The Hezbollah attacks, because Hezbollah, they have been firing rockets into Israel. And you're not going to hear that. All you're going to hear is that, look at how much people they kill. But Hezbollah is the one who started it. They were firing rockets into Israel. Even now, they're firing rockets. In fact, when, could you believe this? When the war in Gaza started with the Hamas, and Israel started to respond, do you know that Hezbollah, Israel didn't have any, any fight with them, Hezbollah started to fire rockets into Israel too, in support of the Hamas? And things have escalated to the point where Israel say, all right, all they want to get me into a war, we're not backing down to anybody. And so <laughs> they, they coordinated these, these explosions with their pagers and their walkie-talkies and so on. And then the, the intelligence told them that they, these commanders were meeting and blow them up. Because Israel is not afraid. Israel is not afraid to attack it's enemies. And one of the things you'll realize with Israel, they believe that the best defense is offense. And so Israel is always prepared to go on that war path. So these tensions, these rising tensions, these rising conflicts that we're seeing just within the last week will cause even more instability. And even before this happened, the United States government with her allies was working feverishly to try to bring an end to the Gaza war. And then this come and happen. Hmm. So this means that there can only be further escalation, more conflict, more wars in the future. In fact, there will be no peace. You know why? Psalms 83 verse 4 to 8. Listen to what the psalmist says. 
speaking about Israel's enemies. This goes all the way back to biblical times. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. Listen to the, the ones that have done this. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gibal, Ammon and Am Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. So many of these Arab nations at the behest of Iran, the main architect, they have formed a confederacy to wipe out Israel. That is their, that is their number one objective. And many have tried. Many U.S. presidents, many you know, Western leaders have tried to broker a two-state solution between Palestine and Israel. But that will never happen. You know why? The Palestinians do not want Israel there. They will never agree to a two-state solution. They will always instigate war. And Israel is always going to respond. So there's always going to be a bitter conflict. That is why you hear them talking about this two-state solution, two-state solution, but it's not going to happen. Because the Palestinians, they don't want, they don't want a two-state solution. They want Israel to be banished. They want Israel to be obliterated. They want a one-state solution. And of course, Israel says, well, you all can do all you want. This land was given to us by God himself. We not move in we like who'll see we not move in <laughs> they're going down low they anchor in themselves and they not move in so you see why now you're going to always have war because one side says we want you out of here the other side says we not move in you can say what you want you can do what you want we are moving and this has been the state of affairs going all the way back to the biblical times. So that is why there can be no permanent peace solution in the Middle East until the Prince of Peace comes. Israel's enemies will continue to poke the bear because that's what Israel represents in the region. Although Israel is small, I mean, if you look at Israel on the map, they are smaller in size and all of their enemies, yet they are a military giant. Many of the Arab nations recognize that. That's why they are forming a confederacy. You know, we used to say in school, it's like they gang up on you. Yeah. I remember in school, sometimes they see fellas fighting. And I don't know why school children like to push things so. They push you in a circle. <laughs> and a whole set of people gather around you. You know, and they gang up on you ready to fight. That is what Israel's enemies are doing. You know, poking the bear. And of course, Israel will never back down. Never. Every time you, you threaten Israel, all right, we're going to respond with equal or greater force. And so we can expect further escalation of wars. Because Jesus said it must happen it must and he said to us don't be troubled there are believers who are troubled why are you troubled jesus says don't be troubled these things have to come to pass so we need to know what's going on we need to keep our eyes on the lord because there will be further escalation of wars in fact i believe that this war that was started in gaza last year will be the war that will eventually tip the scales to plunge us into god's end time agenda i believe this gaza war 
will become the tipping point will tip us into those events that will precipitate the return of the Lord. And the term tipping point, in case you've never heard that term before, it was popularized in, in the use of daily life by the, a gentleman by the name of Malcolm Gladwell. You could Google him. But back in the year 2000, he wrote a book called The Tipping Point, where he explained what this means. And essentially, a tipping point is a point in a situation where a series of small changes become significant enough to cause a larger change, a profound change. You know, we use the expression, that was the straw that break the camel's back. How many of you are familiar with that? Well, I believe this Gaza war that was started one year ago will be the straw that breaks the proverbial camel's back. It's going to lead us into, you know, these end time events that the Bible talks about. You say, why do you believe that? Well, just take a look at what is happening since this war began one year ago. There's been an escalation in tensions in the region. This has now become a nightmare for the whole world. Gaza has become a war zone. As Israel continues to pursue the eradication of the Hamas. Hezbollah, which was only on the fringes. They have now become a main target. And they too now are in a full-blown war with Israel. We talked about the Houthis. They are also being used by the main architect to fuel instability in the region that is affecting the global supply chains. And so because of the economic fallout, because of the rise in casualties, tens of thousands of people dying every day, these events in the Middle East have now eclipsed the Russian-Ukraine war in the global headlines. It seems as though you're not hearing much about that war. Why? Because what is happening with Israel now is dominating the world stage. The tentacles of the Gaza war has extended its web of disruption throughout the Middle East. And now is reaching to various parts of the world. So much so that there is now a credible threat that this war which started one year ago will escalate and draw other players into the mix. I want you to hear the warning from the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. I believe it's very applicable to where we are now. This is what Paul said. He says, for when they say peace and safety... Then sudden destruction comes upon them. As what? Labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. The U.S. and many Western allies, they are feverishly trying to broker an end to the Gaza war. And that has just been blown up into smithereens within the last few days. Because of these attacks. And so any peace apart from the Prince of Peace is really a false peace that will be scuttled. It doesn't matter who tries to broker peace. All attempts will fail. Whether it's the US president, whether it's the Pope, whether it's the Antichrist. Because he and all will try to broker peace. But all of those attempts will fail. At best, those peace efforts will be temporary. The only one who can bring lasting peace to this troubled region is the Prince of Peace. Could someone call his name? Jesus. Jesus. He is the only one that could bring lasting peace in that region. So until Jesus physically returns to the planet... 
Do not expect any permanent peace solution. It's not going to happen. I say that with confidence. No matter how good the spin doctors spin. You know, there are some people that can well spin. They give you a, what do you call it, a googly? Spin you because the eye to go crisscross. <laughs> Sometimes they will try to spin the story. But no matter how good they spin, any and all man-made attempts at peace is going to unravel into war. Because Jesus said these things must come to pass. So the Gaza war has now extended to Lebanon. And it's going to continue to escalate. It's going to rope in other countries who will fight against Israel. You say, well, who are these countries? And we've talked about this in the past. And so let this be a reminder. There are other countries who are going to get into the mix. We've talked about Iran. We said they are the main architects. And according to Jeremiah 49, a serious crisis will unfold in the southwestern peninsula of Iran. It's going to happen. You know why it's going to happen? Because of what the Bible says. Listen to what Jer Jeremiah 49 2 says. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. That I will cause to be heard an alarm of war in Rabbah of the Ammonites. It shall be a desolate mound and her villages shall be burned with fire. Then Israel shall take possession of his inheritance, says the Lord. That area there is the southwestern part of Iran. And according to the prophet Jeremiah, he's saying... A situation will unfold. War! Israel is going to attack Iran. Because Iran is playing a... They play in a kind of... How to put it, boy? They play in a game. It's like they're in the war, but they're not in the war. They, they end the war through their proxies. Through their tentacles. The Hamas and the Hezbollah and the Houthis. They're manipulating those organizations. But that is really Iran behind the scenes. And I believe what's going to happen, Israel is going to get fed up. Or I don't know if Iran is going to stage an attack. But something is going to happen and Israel is going to bomb Iran. According to Jeremiah. And so this is going to cause further escalation. And what that is going to do when Israel attacks Iran, another country is going to get involved. Another gang member is going to jump into the mix. You know, sometimes you see them schoolboys fighting. And when one partner sees partner getting licks, <laughs> you know what they do? They jump in the ring too. Well, I go in and throw some blows too. That is exactly what's going to happen. When Iran's partner see that Iran getting blows, they're going to jump in. You say, who is this country that is going to jump in? Who is this second country? Syria. You say, why Syria? Syria is one of the main allies of Iran. Anytime you talk Iran, you're talking Syria. Syria have allowed Iran to occupy strategic positions within their country. To use their airspace so that they can attack Israel. So Syria drinking medicine for Iran. <laughs> you ever hear that expression? They're drinking medicine for you. They're supporting you. They're with you. They're drinking the same medicine you're drinking. And so when, when Syria sees this, they are going to jump to Iran's defense. And of course... That is going to cause even further escalation. According to Isaiah 17, 1 to 3, listen to what is going to happen to Syria. Isaiah says, Isaiah 17, 1 to 3, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus is the a main city in Syria. He says, behold, Damascus will cease from being a city. 
And it will be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They will be for flocks which lie down. And no one will make them afraid. The fortress also will cease from Ephraim. The kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria. They will be as the glory of the children of Israel. Says the Lord of hosts. So something is going to cause Israel to attack Damascus. And the attack will be so severe that the entire city will be turned into a ruinous heap. They will be destroyed. Now when this happens, a third country is going to jump into the mix again. You see my partner, a senior partner is getting licks, boy. Bad licks. <laughs> Bad licks. Nah, I can't, I can't take that. I jump in. Here. Who is the third country? That is going to join the fight. That country is none other than Russia. Russia. People are underestimating Russia. Now Iran. Uh, not Iran. Ukraine is doing a, 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 a fantastic job. Well of course because they are supported by the western allies. In fact. Right now. Ukraine has captured part of Russia. You all saw that? I mean, who would have thought that Ukraine going up against the mighty Russia, they now have barricaded and ring fence part of Russia. And still, people are underestimating Russia. Don't underestimate Russia. They are featured prominently in end time scripture. And according to Ezekiel 38 and 39, Russia is going to be so bold faced. You see like how they invade Ukraine? They're going to do the same thing to Israel. They will invade Israel. That's why I say don't underestimate Russia. You say where you get that from? Alright. Ezekiel 38. 14 to 16 and verse 18. Listen to what it says. Therefore son of man. God is speaking through his prophet. He says prophesy and say to Gog. Gog is Russia. Thus says the Lord God, on that day, when my people Israel dwell safety, will you not know it? Then you will come. So God is speaking through the prophet. He's speaking about Russia, who is Gog in the scripture. He says, you will come from your place out of the far north. If you go on a map and you draw a line from Israel going north, it's going to hit Russia. God says, you're going to come from your place out of the far north. You and many peoples with you all of them riding on horses a great company and a mighty army so this is not no pipsqueak invasion you know this is going to be a massive invasion again they're going to gather they're going to form a confederacy because they mash up we partner iran you mash up we partner syria we ain't taking that we come in to deal with you god is telling us even before these events happen what is going to happen he says a great company and a mighty army you will come up against my people israel like a cloud wow i love the descriptive language like a cloud what does a cloud do it covers that is to tell you the extent of the army that is going to march towards israel they're going to cover the whole place cover the land God has given us more details. He says it will be in the latter days. And I find this interesting. God says, I will bring you against my land. So God is the one who's going to cause Russia to march against Israel. To make an example of them. Just like he made an example of Pharaoh, remember? Made an example of Pharaoh. I will show my glory through you, Mr. Phil. Through you, Mr. Russia. He says, I will bring you so that the nations may know me. When I am hallowed in you, O God, before their eyes. Verse 18. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. God is going to make a, 
an open show is going to obliterate them and many bible commentators they differ on the timing of when these events will happen but i believe we are quickly approaching that tipping point when all hell will break loose on earth and there will be an escalation of wars and i want to say that if you are here when that is happening if the rapture hasn't occurred yet i have a word of warning to us do not be distracted by the signs and miss the substance do not because all these things that are happening they are signs they are not the substance the war is a sign they are not the substance because I believe in the wake of all of these conflicts, the bride of Christ will be caught away unexpectedly. No one except the fathers knows when that will happen. In the Greek, it's referred to as the harpozo. We know it to be the rapture. The rapture is going to happen when there is great instability in the world. When there is great tumult in the world. When people will be distracted. That's why the Bible says it's going to come like a thief in the night. It's going to come when you least expect it. Because many people are going to be distracted. That's why I'm saying. Don't be distracted by the signs. And miss the substance. The substance is the Kairos event. The substance is the rapture of the church. That is the substance. That is what you need to keep your eyes on. So everything that I've said to this point is to get you to open your eyes to see that we are drawing closer and closer to the substance. Don't get tied up with the signs. Don't get lost in the signs. No, the signs point to the substance. The signs point to the way. That is where we need to keep our eyes. Keep your eyes on the prize because it's going to happen in a moment. The Bible says, in a twinkling of an eye, you're going to be changed, you're going to be caught up. There's no time to prepare. You have to be prepared, you have to be living prepared so that whenever it comes, you're ready. Because there's no prophetic event preventing the rapture from happening today none according to daniel 9 26 there were only two events that needed to happen in the interval between the 69th week and the start of the 70th week of daniel you need to study daniel chapter 9 what are those two events one was the messiah being cut off through the cross and the other event was the destruction of jerusalem in ad 70. those two events have already happened almost two thousand years ago those two events took place jesus died he rose again from the dead 38, 38 years later jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. So the rapture can happen any time. But I know what somebody would say. You say, well, if the rapture can happen any time, why has it taken 2,000 years? Because the rapture could have happened in AD 70. But it didn't happen. Why? Because according to 2 Peter 3 9, God is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count what? Slackness. But he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So what has, been, what has God been doing in the last 2,000 years? He's been executing his repentance program. That is what he was doing in the last 2,000 years. Repentance program. Jesus says, I will what? 
build my church i will erect this super edifice and the gates of hell will not prevail against it that is what god has been doing in the last 2000 years he's been forcibly advancing the church building the church people are being saved in every generation numbers are being added to the church that's what god has been doing he's not slack concerning his promise And so, this 2,000 year interval is described as the church age. It has been described as the age or the dispensation of grace. It has been described as the times of the Gentiles. You and I, we are Gentiles. And so, according to Romans 11.25, God, God as it were, has grafted the Gentiles in. And in Romans 11, 25, Paul talks about the fullness of the Gentiles. In other words, there's going to come a point in time, a tipping point, when the, the, the fullness of the Gentiles, the number of Gentiles who have to be saved is going to be reached Paul calls it the fullness of the Gentiles in Romans 11 25 and when the fullness of the Gentiles happens then the rapture is going to take place so why did the rapture not happen yet because the fullness of the Gentiles have not yet been attained there are still souls to be added that's why you can hasten the day by winning souls because as you win souls the closer you get to the fullness of the gentiles and when that number is attained only god knows that number he's the one that is keeping count he alone knows that number when the fullness of the gentiles that's why the bible says no man knows the day or the hour when it's going to happen god alone knows because he is keeping count he knows how many souls are being saved and when the fullness of the gentiles is attained then that shout will be, will, be, will be heard from the heaven leaves. It's going to trigger a sequence of events. And so friends, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. We are drawing with every soul that is won into the kingdom. We are drawing closer and closer to the fullness of the Gentiles. And when we hit the fullness of the Gentiles, we are going to be snatched out of here in an instant. So as I conclude this message this morning, now is not the time to play church. Now is not the time to be distracted by the cares and the burdens of life. Now is the time to trim your lamps. Now is the time to watch and pray. Because what? Your redemption draw it nigh. I believe it's closer than we think. We have to get ready and stay ready. And I want to say to you this morning, if you are here, you know that you are not ready. You know that should the rapture happen tonight, you're going to be left behind. I want to give you the opportunity to get ready. All heads bowed. All eyes closed. You say, preacher, I've heard the word. I know that I'm not ready to meet the Lord. I know that I am distracted by the cares of this life. If you are here this morning, you want to give your heart to the Lord. You want to get ready, lift your hands. We're going to see it. We're going to pray with you and for you. Do we have anyone like that in our service this morning? You want to, you want to make your calling and election sure. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. If there's no one, could we stand in the presence of the Lord? Maybe there's someone who is watching on the World Wide Web. 
And if you want to give your life to the Lord, we want to give you that opportunity. So congregation, I want you to repeat these words with me. Make them your own words. It is not a prayer of magic. It is a prayer of repentance. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord Jesus, I confess and repent of all my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Make me the person you want me to be. I believe you died for my sins and rose again from the dead after the third day. I now make you my Savior and Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for everyone who said that prayer. Whether physically present or absent, those on the World Wide Web, mighty God, we stretch forth our hands towards them. And I pray, Lord, that you will touch everyone. Lord, that you will give them a new heart, new passion, new desires. Lord, I thank you that you will make them a brand new person. Your word says, all things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. So Lord, we call forth new things out of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you are here this morning, you have a need, you have a concern, you want us to agree with you in prayer, you can come to the front. We're going to pray with you and for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Brother Paul, let's sing that song, Cornerstone. Cornerstone. Hallelujah. Come to the front. Lift your hands. We give God all the praise. My hope is built on nothing else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. My hope is built on nothing less. Christ the Lord, cornerstone, weak made strong, yes. in Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, with uplifted hand. Hallelujah. 
Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. All pain and discomfort in the body. I command you to leave this body. All pain in the stomach. Leave right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Stomach be healed. Be made whole. Be made well. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within Hallelujah 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 to be healed. I command the eyelids to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. All people leave right now in the name of Jesus. Receive. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Lord for doing it. In Jesus' name. I cast you out of that home right now. Every contrary spirit, every spirit of division, I command you to go in Jesus' name. I release a spirit of love, a spirit of forgiveness, a spirit of togetherness into that home right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare it done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
Mighty God, let your presence come upon Sister Nancy. Let your presence fall fresh upon her. Touch her, Lord, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Let your presence, let your presence rule and reign in her life, mighty God. I rest on His unchanging grace. So, Father, we give you praise. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in my brother's life. Lord, my anchor goes with you. You are creating a new page, a new chapter in his life. You're opening new doors. And my brother God says, all things are passed away, all things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. And so I rebuke every spirit of condemnation, every voice of the enemy. I silence right now. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, I pray that you will cause them to hear your voice. Cause them to hear your voice. To hear you say, here is the way. Walk in it. Walk through it. So Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do in and through his life. We thank you for transformation. We ask that you will give him the strength and the grace to walk in your statutes. To walk in your ways, mighty God. So God, I pray that you will bring forth growth in a true life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We make strong in Savior's love to the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Could we worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Could we magnify His name? Could we glorify His name? You, Lord. We worship Lord, we thank you, you for Your goodness. Lord God. Thank you for Your grace. We appreciate thank you, Father. Thank you for the move of Your Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the word. God we bless Hallelujah. You, Lord. We magnify You. Oh, bless the Lord. We glorify You. We glorify You, Lord. We honor You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worthy are you. We bless you. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.